Ooh. Is that another box? Oh, don't just stare at it. Open it up! Oh, my God. These boxes are from Chef's Plate, the leading meal kit service that delivers to the homes of Canadians so that they can make delicious meals in 30 minutes or less. There's so much stuff. So much stuff. Think carefully, home cooks, but more importantly, think fast. Many Canadians don't have all night to make dinner. Your recipe must follow the Chef's Plate promise to prepare delicious meals quickly. That means you're going to have to make a magnificent MasterChef quality dish in half the usual time, 30 minutes. Wow. Ooh. At the end of the cook, we'll call up the three most promising dishes for tasting. Are you ready to make the best half-hour meal of your lives? Yes, Chef! You better hope so, because your time starts now! Go time, come on, come on. I'm making a nicely spiced pork chop with some roasted fingerling potatoes and apple slaw. I'm a meat and potatoes kind of girl. I'm gonna win this today. Cinnamon, coriander, beautiful. They're gonna to want to think of things that you can do quickly and easily at home. They've got turkey tenderloin that could be roasted off beautifully in the oven. Wonderful vegetables there that could be char-grilled, sauteed, roasted. There's such a great variety of options that you can pull together. It's about making it convenient, but still having great flavor food. Gotta have some heat, but not too hot, not today. I'm gonna go veggie. Some people are vegetarian, so it's good for everyone. I don't have any protein, so I don't have to worry about the cook time on that. It's very stressful to cook in 30 minutes. I usually have a lot more time at home. I'm going to make a stuffed pork with quinoa and Brussels sprouts to keep it healthy. I'm going to go for some blackened basa, some quinoa rice salad with a really nice blackened piece of pineapple. This is kind of the stuff that I would eat at home. Pretty healthy, but tons of flavors. Michael G. Chef Michael. Tell me what's on the menu. A stuffed pork chop with uh, some apples, some dried figs, and I have some spices in there as well too, a little Parmesan cheese to round it out. How would you feel if people across Canada had the opportunity to try the dish that you invented right here? I would be ecstatic. I think it would be the greatest honor to have people want to try my food and cook my food. This really hits home for me. You know, I'm a student. I don't have a lot of time. Doing mathematics is busy. And you hope you can get all this done in 30 minutes or Definitely. less? Definitely. You know, I'm a wizard with time, and I'm going to teach people to be a wizard with time at home as well. Well, I love the passion, I love the motivation. Hopefully, I love the dish. Thank you very much, Chef. Delicious. I'm making uh, an Asian-inspired pork taco. At the fire hall, I'm lucky to get 30 minutes in a row of cooking time without hearing the bell go off. 30 minutes, I'm all over it. It's going to taste unreal. 15 minutes! 15 minutes! You're halfway there! 15 minutes! Hi there, Nadia. Hi, Chef Michael. What are you creating? I am doing an elevated kofta and sog. In my kofta, I have garam masala, chili, garlic, parsley, onion. I have chopped walnuts. Mm. I'm also going to be doing a very rustic green raita. So you are actually tapping into your Pakistani roots here. Every single person I've ever met who has tried Pakistani food is always converted the second they try it. It smells absolutely delicious. Best of luck. Keep on cooking. Thank you. Ah, how's this going to go on? The judges take one final look before selecting the most promising 30-minute meals for Chef's Plate. The winner of this mystery box will also win a huge advantage in the upcoming Elimination Challenge. The first home cook we'd like to call up tempted us with her sophisticated use of spices. And that home cook is... Nadia. I'm feeling really great. I was hoping that they would see the complexity in my food. I've made for you today a kofta, an elevated sog, a chili potato with a raita, which is a common yogurt sauce eaten with Pakistani cuisine. It looks incredible. What inspired this dish? When I opened the box, instantly I just was taken back to things I grew up with. 
It's beautiful. It looks amazing. Thank you. It's incredible. The flavors are all very distinct. That cumin, that coriander, and that lemon, they're just singing together. It's a standout dish. Great job. Thank you, chef. The spice seasoning in the kofta is? Uh, garam masala, chili powder, coriander, garlic, shallot, parsley. A lot of times when one speaks of spice, some people cringe because they think heat, fiery, hot, uncomfortable to eat. This is aromatic, warm, subtle, long, rich, just beautiful spices. It has heart. I think you could have been more generous and put three koftas on there because I think a good plate of food is like opening your heart to the world. Nicely done, Nadia. Thank you, chef. This is a stuffed pork with dried figs, apples, crisp potato, Brussels sprouts, and mixed green salad. I think the plating looks terrific. You've made it look appetizing and appealing. You've added great color. And the pork is cooked beautifully. Just a little rosé color to it, just the way I love it. It's full of flavor. I think the fact that you stuffed the pork loin just makes it that much more interesting. You've added a sauce that gives us that restaurant quality taste to it. I'd be licking my lips all night long. I think you could have taken that pork loin and pan fry it just on a slightly lower heat. To me, it's got a little bit of drying out on the edges, but small details like that will come with experience. Well done, Michael. Thank you very much. You stuffed it with figs. Is that apple? Yep. It's like a little mosaic. It's marbled. It shows a lot of skill. Thank you very much. There's a lot going on in this plate. You've got the tomatoes here, Brussels sprouts. Some uh, walnuts in there, too. This is amazing. Thank you should be very proud of yourself. 30 minutes, and you pulled this off. Incredible. Thank you very much, Chef. They wanted something that tasted amazing and able to be made by any home cook across Canada. I'm feeling very good about this right now. This is fried chicken, one of the most iconic comfort food dishes you can imagine. You might think, geez, this is simple, this is easy, but it is far from it. I've been working on a fried chicken recipe for 10 years. 45 minutes to do fried chicken is very difficult. Timing here is critical. You've got chicken, you've got your mashed potatoes, and you have your gravy. They all take different times, but you have to coordinate them all perfectly to execute this dish. Time management's gonna be important. I just wanna get these potatoes in there really quick just to get that started. But look at Lynn. She has broken and butchered her entire chicken. I've broken down chicken several times. It's actually cheaper to buy a whole chicken than to buy chicken that's already been cut up. I'm not a fried chicken type of guy, but I understand the concept behind it. Don't wanna freak you out, Michael, but you gotta move on that chicken, brother. I would like to brine it in buttermilk, something simple. What is it about buttermilk that makes the perfect fried chicken? I love that sour element that it gives the chicken and all the breadcrumbs stick to it. It's beautiful. I'm gonna keep the chicken very simple. A little cayenne pepper, a little paprika for flavor. Now, the one thing you have to be careful when you're seasoning is that if you have too much spice, the spice will actually overtake the delicate flavor of the chicken. Some cayenne pepper just for that little kick of heat at the end. Using a ricer is the superior way whenever you are mashing anything. Sabrina is the most calm, cool, and collected out of the whole bunch. I'm so confident. I'm even passing my potatoes so they're silky smooth. Show off. I guess I cook better when I'm upset. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left. So it looks like they've got the chicken just going into the fries right now. It's hot. The breast, if it's deboned, will cook very, very quickly, almost like a chicken finger. Never fry the whole breast. The timing's gonna be key for that. The thighs and the drumstick, if the bone is still left on, it's gonna take a little bit longer to cook, probably about another five to six minutes. If you undercook it and you cut open a piece of chicken and there's still blood at the core of it or up against the bone, it is the worst. Hey there, Lynn. Has your fried chicken dinner turned out as you'd hoped? Yes, chef. What is the seasoning that you put into your crust, your dredge? Oregano, thyme, rosemary, cayenne pepper, paprika, salt and pepper. That's exactly what I want to hear, the crispiness of it. I'm gonna try the thicker piece of breast. You happy with that? I'm very happy with that, chef. That's definitely cooked. You can see some of the steam coming out of it now. It's moist and glistening right there. Yes, chef.
I think it's very good. Thank you. It's got a great crunch to it. The flavor of the dredge does not overpower the delicate flavors of the chicken. Great execution on the chicken breast, that's for sure. Thank you, Chef. And the gravy. A little on the blonde side, maybe? A little lighter? Yes, Chef. That's the way my daughters like their gravy. But the taste is there, Chef. And you're right. The taste is there with that gravy. It's light, it's sweet. The mashed potatoes, however, there's definitely some lumps in there. Yes. Not as smooth as I would have hoped. Not bad for 45 minutes. Definitely comfort food cuisine. Thank you. Lynn. Yes, Chef. Dark meat is always the most difficult to get right. What do I expect to see when I cut into this? I expect you to see juices flowing out, nice and succulent and tender with a crispy exterior. That, to me, is perfectly cooked. Wow. It's tender. It's juicy. It's well seasoned. That is a piece of perfect fried chicken. Thank you, Chef. My daughters would be very proud of me right now, so it feels amazing. Squidding pasta with honey mushrooms and a soft boiled hen's egg. Now, this test is a replication. The first thing you have to do is delicately fillet and collect all the ink you can from several squid to make your jet black pasta. I'm extremely nervous. I've never, ever touched a raw squid before. I've never broken down a squid, never taken ink out, but you know what? You learn on the fly. Where the frick is the silvery thing? So step number one, they have to cut into that squid and reveal that beautiful little ink sac. Then you have to press your fingers down on it and squeeze, put a little bit of pressure, not too much, and force that ink right down into your container. Looks like May is the first one to get the ink sac out. Impressive. I got this. They've just harvested that squid ink. Next is to make the pasta. I tell you, you gotta be very intelligent here because you gotta figure out how much squid ink you have and adjust the amount of pasta you make according to that. Come on. Taya. Yes, Chef Claudio. Have you ever made fresh pasta before? I have, actually. I just want to make sure I get the proper consistency in the dough. Who do you think's going to struggle the most here? I have a feeling that it might be Kim, just because she hasn't made pasta that often. Well, I can see the focus. Let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. Thank you, Chef Claudio. Okay. Do you have muscles? Come on. The dough needs to rest for 10 minutes. So my strategy is to get the pasta out of the way and then get my boiled egg going. Okay. Timing is essential. I'm going to cook my egg for five minutes. The egg has to be perfectly soft boiled. I would say probably around five to six minutes on the egg. I'm going to boil my egg for exactly six minutes. And you got to remember also, once that egg is out of that boiling water, you make sure you right away cool it down with ice cold water. You got to shock it. I gotta do my pasta for three minutes to get it perfect. This is all about impeccable time management. If you put your noodles into that water too early, they're gonna get mushy. If they don't go in and have enough time, they're gonna be too al dente. One minute, yeah, one minute left. Check your plate, make sure you have everything on it. It broke. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Hi there, May. Hi, Chef Michael. How are you feeling? I think I might have overcooked my egg. What makes you think your egg is overcooked, May? I cooked it for the same amount of time that Matt did. I also did it for six minutes as well. I see. Yeah. You know, if the egg is cold, it takes a little longer. Depending whether it's room temperature, it may take a little bit less time. The size of the egg. So let's see if this egg is golden, rich, and runny. If my egg is overcooked, this could be the end of my food dream. Look at that. That's pretty good to me. Relieved? Relieved. <laughs>
Did you hit the egg with a little salt? No, I hit the noodles with the salt. It's always that last bright pop of flavor. Never forget again. <laughs> You'll never forget again is yeah. right. So what am I expecting to taste when I dig into this jet black noodle? You're gonna get the garlic, the butter, and the olive oil, as well as the chives. This tastes great. Flavors are there. I can taste the garlic. I can taste the lemon. Be proud. Thank you, Chef Alvin. So this is what we expect. A medium rare steak, perfect crispy frite, and a flawless Bernays sauce. Three exacting elements, one delicious dish. But this challenge is not just about achieving the right flavors. It's about managing your time. This delicious trio must all come together at precisely the same moment. Hot and ready for us to taste. Very difficult. At your stations, you'll find state-of-the-art equipment. Everything you need to cook the perfect steak frite and a Bernays sauce. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Yes, chef. Your 40 minutes starts now. I can't go home because I love steak and frites. The thing that I go out on, I can't eat for the rest of my life. And I don't know how I'll live without steak and frites, so. This is one of the most difficult dishes to actually master because there's absolutely no room for error. You've got to cut perfect fries. They have to be the exact size. The judges are going to look at each individual fry to make sure they're all precise. I noticed Kayla is cutting her potatoes almost with a laser precision. You should have every single potato cut the same size to get even perfect cooking. You do the first frying at a low temperature. Finally, you finish with deep frying at a higher temperature. It's actually one of the most difficult components in that dish. Kayla, which component are you most worried about right now? The frites. Hmm, why is that? Because I've never made frites before. They're blanched and they're ready to get put in. You sure they're cooked enough? Yes, chef, they will be. They'll be perfect for you guys. Why are you making uh, your Bernays off the heat? Uh, I'm actually off on, off on, so I don't scramble the eggs. What happens if you scramble this? I'm screwed. Good luck. Thank you, chef. You have 10 minutes left. Eric's basting is flawless. It's amazing. Okay. He's cooking that steak like a professional chef. Steak goes in, and I'm just praying it's getting a good sear. I hear the sizzle, so that's a good sign. Like music to my ears. I look down at what should be my hot skillet, and the friggin' pan isn't searing hot. And like, that's rule number one for your steak. You want like a searing hot pan. So I'm kind of in the weeds at this point about my steak. So I'm thinking, put it in the oven. The oven's at 325 right now. If you give it five minutes in there, it should cook all the way through. Mike has his steak now in the oven. The steak's not thick enough to be in an oven. I would have it on top of the stove where you can see it, watch it carefully. I'm basting the steak with butter, and all I'm thinking is, do not freaking overbase the steak. Five minutes remaining. Get those fries in the basket, guys. Oh my god, I am so stupid. I put my fries in the 300 degree fryer, not the 375. They're not bubbling. If one thing could sink Kayla, it's going to be her fries. She is behind everybody, and if she doesn't really pull it together, I honestly think she's going home. Kayla, we asked for a steak to be cooked perfect, medium rare. What am I going to see when I cut your steak open? Um, nice and crisp on the outside and a beautiful medium rare on the inside. You're confident of that? Never too confident. It certainly is a little darker on the outside than I might expect. Okay. That is a nicely cooked, medium rare steak. Yes. See it quite nicely. It's a little dark in some areas, which would lead me to believe maybe the pan was a little too hot. Yes, chef. But the cook is perfect, medium rare. The difference of color from the searing from the outside edge to a richer, deeper pink as it moves to the center. Beautiful. Thank you, chef. It's very, very good. The seasoning is spot on also. Thank you, chef. I was very concerned that you were putting too much on. Kayla. Hi, chef. You happy? Um, I'm very happy with my steak and my Bernays. 
these uh, french fries. Try one. What do you think? I think they're cooked. I think they need more color on the outside, though. I definitely agree with you that it needs a lot more sun, I think. Looking at my fries, all I'm thinking is, where is my purse? I need my bronzer right now. These fries are pasty. I would pay for that. Thank you so much. It's delicious. Much. It's well-balanced, great acidity. How did you master a Bernays in one hour? You made it before? Uh, third time's a charm. Uh, this is my, my third time, but I, um, I'm, I eat a lot of it, so I know what it's supposed to taste like. It took me hundreds of times to master the basic, humble hollandaise sauce, which is the mother of this sauce. And you've done that three times. Thank you, Chef. Had you nailed the fries, you'd probably have one of the best steak frites with Bernays that I've ever had. It's so close. Yes, Chef. Really what's gonna stand out for me here is fish that's butchered properly. No bones or there shouldn't be any bones. Oh Lord, so many bones. Behind again! Sorry! Mary is one of the strongest home cooks here. Come on. We're giving Mary the steel hair trout because it's got a lot of tiny bones. Uh, I'm almost there. Uh. They gave me the mackerel. I know it's fairly fatty, so I'm just grilling it and pairing it with quick pickle will help tame the oiliness of the fish. I've been fishing since I was a kid. It was one of my favorite activities to do with my father, so I'm feeling more confident than I have in the past. Not only am I not going home, I'm gonna win. 20 minutes! Okay, this isn't bad, not bad at all. Veronica, what do you get? I got the red mallet. My mom loves fish. I cook fish for her all the time. So I'm feeling right at home right now. I'm doing something I know very well. When my mom visits me from Hong Kong, she always requests that we eat at home one day and I make this dish for her. I am going to do a Thai style fried fish. Uh, I'm going to fry the bone as well. And I'm also doing like a Thai style sauce for it to be dipped in. Well, this is a Chinese way. I've had many times at a Chinese restaurant. You got to be very careful and make sure this part is very crispy because the head takes a lot longer and this doesn't take very long to burn. I'm well aware of that. I will be holding it with my life. I hope so. Ten minutes! Meat is all about minutes. Fish is about seconds. Seconds make a very big difference when you're cooking fish. Smell it, Jen. It smells beautiful, girl. It is a lot more tricky, I think, than cooking chicken or beef because it is so delicate. Light and delicate. I need to flip it over. I don't want to lose the skin. Look at Jacqueline. Look at her fish. Yes! Thank God. Beautiful. Veronica, she's deep frying the whole head and spine. If she pulls that off, it could be a winner. I got one of the easiest fish here. I need to go above and beyond. It's a grilled mackerel. And the sauce is an almond puree. The beets I cooked in beet juice, roasted tomatoes, and then there's a radish pickle. It's a tricky fish to cook because it's so thin. It's perfect. It's a beautifully balanced, beautiful to look at dish. Honestly, it looks like we're in a restaurant right now. A great restaurant. Thank you so much. It is such a big, distinct flavor on mackerel. Yes. So what did you use to counter that? I did a pickle on the pieces of radish you see. Beautiful balance. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Great dish. <laughs> I made a Thai-style fried red mullet with a fish dipping sauce and a papaya and carrot slaw. And what was the biggest challenge in you pulling this dish off? The biggest challenge was probably the fact that I only have one fish. One chance to get it right. <laughs> Correct. Red mullet is a delicate, sweet, gentle fish. I'm a little surprised that you put it up against such a, a big, almost fiery sauce. It's almost counterintuitive. Oh. But it works. Thank you, Chef. Sweet, acidic, but very complimentary. And what I see here is nothing short of a love affair with food. That's the Veronica that we want to see. Thank you, Chef. This is typical Asian, using every single part of the fish. You make good use of the bone, and I'm just gonna dig into that. 
This is exactly how I would have done it. I am so happy to see you finally bring out the Asian in your cooking. I'm happy to see you happy. <laughs> well done. Thank you. I'm gonna, you know, be ballsy and do a pasta. It is incredibly risky <laughs> to make a tortellini in 45 minutes. God. But if you play it safe, you may not get noticed. I always forget it's such a bloody workout. All right, let's do this. Most of my cooking skills and techniques come from watching celebrity chefs on TV. I would say to date, this is the most important dish of my life. Jamie Oliver's like massive. He's an idol of mine. Trevor. Mr. Oliver. Bring very, here, very buddy. excited to see you, brother. What is going yeah. through So your what head. I'm gonna do for you today is a roasted fall vegetable medley. Yeah, like yeah. you're thinking, like you're thinking. I mean, to be honest, I base a lot of my cooking after you. I like your approach to very simple but elevated food. I like you shave your cheese from up here and it yeah. falls all over the plate. They all think I'm doing that for style. It's not. <laughs> it's Even not. distribution. There you go, chef. You crack on. I don't want to stop you. It was an honor to meet you. Beautiful. Well, Thank it's going to be an honor to try your food. That's enough said. I need to win this. <laughs> Come on, cook, boys. Barry, chef. I think me and you are the oldest in the room today. I right? think I've got you by a couple of years. OK, Maybe. well, I'm chasing you behind. So um, <laughs> what we got? I am going to simply braise some clams with this andouille sausage. Yeah. And I'm going to serve all of that together with some herb ricotta gnocchi. Right. Confit heirloom cherry tomatoes, patty pan squash. And I'm going to work in some rapini, some escarole, and the uh, stinging nettle. Do you think there might be a two, few extra bits here? Feel the conviction in a smaller cluster of flavors, OK? That's all I'll say. I'm very excited. Thank you. And equally worried. Good luck. Thank you. 20 minutes! You have 20 minutes left! 20 minutes. So short on time, which seems to be my downfall. I am very much under the gun. Man alive. Why did I do this to myself? How do you do this every week? This is a lot of stress. I haven't even stuffed my tortellini yet. I don't think I'm going to finish. <sighs> I'm Taya. Hi. Wait, what's going on? I'm making a tortellini. So I've got like a ricotta sausage, um, and then I'm going to do a peach sauce. But I'm running out of time right now. You're all right. Remember, those rabs only take a couple of minutes to cook. Only tip I would say is remember when you're doubling this pasta up, it swells in the water. Right. So just maybe question thickness of pasta. Right. But okay. don't freak out. OK. Don't Thank freak you, out. Chef. Be confident. I'm going to try to do a couple thinner ones, take what he said. And hopefully, I don't hyperventilate. I've got manila clams braised with andouille sausage and pan crisp greens. Here we go, bro. You look surprised when uh, when we called you out there. It's my first time being called up. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> good flavors, good seasoning. I like the char on the greens here. The clams are not overcooked. I think you've done a great job. Bro. Thank you. But what I would do here is I would try and amplify that natural broth that comes out of the clam. I'd probably go in a bowl and keep it hot and steamy. But I think all round it's celebrating loads of elements there that are delicious. Well done, Barry. Well Thank done. Thank you. You cook the clam with respect. It's still tender and moist and deliciously sweet. The andouille sausage starts to come through, so you get that wonderful smokiness to it. It's a dish that is definitely restaurant worthy. Thank you, chef. What you have in front of you today is a warm fall vegetable salad with a roasted garlic lemon aioli, and then some toasted squash seeds and some pecorino cheese. Let's get in there. Plating's very nice. So what do you do for a living? I'm a plumber gas fitter, chef. Your pipe work must be beautiful. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with you. You know, here's the thing. Vegetables are always secondary in a lot of restaurants. And what you've done here is you've made them numero uno. Seasoning very nice and helped along with that pecorino. Very good dish. Thank you. Means a lot, chef. Trevor. Chef Alvin. This is beautiful. Thank you, chef. This is good food. The techniques you have here, you got grilling, you got some saute, and you did the right things for the right vegetable. That's very intelligent. I would say the seeds, it's a bit hard. Maybe de shell them. Other than that, this dish is perfect for any restaurant, including mine. Thank you so much, Chef. 
I did a Indoya ricotta stuffed tortellini with white wine peach sauce and warm peach salsa. Oh, man. I can't believe you're going to eat my food right now. <laughs> Let's do it. Ooh. I mean, for me, it looks cute, it looks pretty, but then you eat it and it's like, pow! Big flavor. <laughs> You've got the big, smoky flavor of the andouille and the lightness that kind of comes with the ricotta. And then the sauce, I've never had anything like that. I like the introduction of peach. And actually, across Italy, they use peaches in many interesting, savory ways. So, good job, girl. Very Thank impressive. You. The filling is, it's good. The sausage has that heat component, and the peach just cools it right down. But I think the sauce is a little bit heavy. But the dish is very ambitious, and you're showing that you're here to push yourself. Yeah, chef, I am. Great work. Thank you. I had no idea if these flavors would work, and they did, and Jamie Oliver likes it. In this challenge, the first few moments was probably the most important, because you're setting the strategy out for the balance of the 45-minute cook. Go with shrimp. Shrimp. We can do this. We can do this. When I think of Julia, I think of a calm, cool, and collected woman. I'm pretty loud. I'm pretty effervescent. The yin to my yang. I feel super confident. This is our chance to shine. First thing I would do is determine who the leader is. I think you need to have one leader. I don't think you can have two people that are having a power struggle. Can you listen to me? Yeah. Come into a pasta salad. I've got an amazing plan, and I just need to convince Jennifer to go with it. I can make pasta, and I'm yeah. fast with pasta. Yeah? Yes. Is that what you want to do? Yes. Let's do that. Okay, gonna, I trust you. Slam. I am so excited to work with Terry because he's an absolute genius. I am trusting my partner here, and I'm ready to work my way to the winner's circle. Oh, the irony. I'm <laughs> Italian, and you're making the pasta. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so fun. I love it. I'm having fun. Me too. Julia, April yes. Lee. How are you doing, guys? Hi. I'm well, thanks. So what dish are you cooking? We are doing a peach glazed grilled shrimp with an Asian slaw. I definitely think this is our opportunity to show the other home cooks that uh, we're forced to be racking glass. All right, I'll leave you get on with it. Good luck. Thanks, Chef Michael. So we're going to boil the pasta in broth. Yeah. Just to inject some flavor in yeah. it. Terry, what are you making here? We're making a bow tie pasta, and we've got some very beautiful herbs and vegetables to support it. Who's deciding what happens here? Terry's actually leading by storm, and I'm totally okay with that. Let me ask you a question now. Sure. Who's going to be to blame if this dish is a bit of a disaster? If this dish is a disaster, it's both of our faults. I look forward to seeing it. It's an Asian slaw with a peach grilled prawn and a parsnip fry on top. And who took the lead in this creation? I'd say it was really even. We both had as much say in every element. We made a great team. Visually, I like the composition. All right. It's really good. The shrimp's perfectly cooked, and the peach is sweet, so it has a great counterbalance to the heat. Really outstanding. That slow dressing is wonderful. It makes a perfect foundation for such a delicious shrimp dish. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. It is a pork roulade with a stuffing of garlic, shallots, and pistachios, a peach sauce, a parsnip puree, and polenta fries. What do you think you learned about yourselves and each other? I liked that I could trust Jeremy, and we divided tasks right away, and we could just work on our own component. Wonderful. Pork looks like it's cooked very nicely. Thank you. A nice little pink blush to it. Delicious. Moist, rich, flavorful. That little sweetness of the background coming from the peaches. Well done, guys. Chef. Nice job. You know what I like about this dish? The polenta fries. I bite into it, I taste the polenta, I taste the corn. So you honor the ingredients. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Very nicely done. This is prawn farfalle pasta salad with pistachios, peas, and kale. The colors just jump out. Fantastic. I noticed you had soy sauce in your station. 
Yes, chef, we use that to marinate the shrimp. You don't typically see soy sauce and Italian food together. Let's see how it tastes. never had a dish that tastes this way. This is a very new taste for me. That is delicious. It's an original. The soy gives you that great salt component. And then you have these little hits of the pistachio, the kale. You're a very clever man. Thank you, Chef. Jennifer, you were very smart, too, to follow Terry's lead. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I should have judged today that I'm a serious home cook, and I came here to win. I couldn't be more happy. My sort of MO is doing classics with a twist. I'm going to try and get a pi velouté done with uh, some tortellini uh, stuffed with celery puree and some seared tuna. When I think tuna, I think the Mediterranean and I think sushi. And I can't make sushi, so I'm going Mediterranean. I think I've barely scratched the surface of what I have to show. Aaron's right underneath us. We can see that he's doing these beautiful pasta from scratch. Aaron, that dough is sexy. Thanks, brother. This competition is the only thing that matters right now. My food dream is to be a restaurateur. Uh, I'd really love to own my own joint. And uh, every day that I'm here is a step closer to making that a reality. Hello, 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 hello. Let's go. It's a seared tuna and gnocchi with coffee garlic. I could actually see every element of the classic tuna casserole dish, but you've transformed it into something that is so relevant looking. I mean, it looks like a modern version. Thank you. What's the crust on the tuna? We drizzled some of the confit garlic oil on top. It's fantastic. This is an incredible dish. Maybe this is the turning point for you in this kitchen. Thank you. Bring up your dish. It's our tuna satake with celery root tortelloni, with mint and pea velouté. It's very sophisticated. It's intelligent. What is inside your tortelloni? It's a celery root puree. I tried to keep it simple. I wanted to mimic the idea of the cream of celery soup. You sound like a pro. Far from it, chef. You've just created the best dish I've had in four seasons. It's amazing. It's extraordinary praise, chef. There's nothing wrong with it. It's amazing. That sauce, it just pops with flavor. Your tortelloni are perfect. Perfectly cooked. You can tell they're handmade. What a shame it would be if you don't quit the job that you have now and become a chef. It'd be a real shame. May? Please bring your dish up to the front. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Everybody went a total different direction than I did. So it is uh, Asian-inspired casserole flavored with bonito, pan-fried tuna, and spinach, and then made your raid peas. It is an interesting little presentation. It's almost as if there are two worlds here, the classic homey-inspired tuna casserole, and then the modern interpretation of the tuna portion of it. And then the green sauce is your pea and spinach. Let's give that a try, an interesting combination. Very rich and savory. Again, a nice savory background, has that little creaminess from the cream sauce. It's a nice nod to the tuna casserole. Thank you. You can all go to your stations now. We provided you with the highest quality German-made Mila appliances. And you will have 25 minutes to make, shape, and cook your pasta. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Are you ready to do all? Yes, 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 yes. Well, your time starts now. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. For me, this is such an exciting challenge because we've never actually made a pasta that is hand-shaped with this degree of difficulty. Oh, come on. There's only two ingredients, flour and water. I think it's very much a technique-driven challenge. To me, the most important part of the dough, I think, is having that hydration level at that proper point where it's going to give you the drag on the board, it's not going to stick anywhere, and you're going to be able to achieve great texture and a great look to the pasta. Hey. Yeah. 
the 25 minutes is a little uh, worrisome, but I'm just gonna put every ounce of effort I got into pulling this off. We gotta do what we gotta do. My strategy to beat berry here is work fast and really start pushing my flavor with my basil and tomato sauce. I see Andy as one of the front runners, but it doesn't scare me to cook against him. The first 20 shifts I ever worked in a restaurant, my job was to hand roll the pasta. So I know what I'm doing. Barry, unfortunately, I'm going to beat you today. <laughs> Old age and treachery, man. <laughs> Always watch out for it. You know, the Loragitas in the butter and herb sauce, they are a much more delicate noodle than the Compunti. They require that delicate little twist to it, and consistency in size is super important. Oh, man, May is fast. That's how you can tell she's a dough master. I'm going to beat Andre because you know what? I work with dough for a living. I know the feel of dough, so I think that's why I have the fancy chair. I own a dumpling business. I work with dough all the time, so there's just so much pressure to win. I am laser focused, and I'm just going to do it. May looks confident, and, and, Andre, and Andre doesn't, doesn't look confident. I have zero experience with Italian food, and I only have 25 minutes, so this is going to be like the worst pressure test ever. Yeah, I'm freaking out. I got to fight really hard. This is going to be a tough one. These are rustic pastas, so they have a bit of a rustic feel, but there's still a consistency that you want to see between each of those noodles. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Oscar, which of the three do you think is the hardest to shape? For me, I would say trophie is quite challenging, simply because it takes a very delicate touch with your bench scraper. If you press too hard, it's going to go right through it, and you can come up with some very odd-looking trophie. I've decided I'm going all Nona style on the trophie. I'm going to work with my hands, because I know Andrew's going to use the bench scraper, so I want to try and get just a little bit above him. Best tools you got. They do all the things. <laughs> Andrew only knows one gear, and it's sixth gear, so he's flying. Speed is the challenge. Every task I can get done quickly is just one step faster. If you're being chased by a bear, you only have to outrun the person you're running with. 10 minutes! You only have 10 more minutes left. This is not easy. 25 minutes is it's quick. So as we all know, when you make fresh pasta, the most important thing is having the appropriate sauce. There should just be enough sauce in it to coat the noodles. No more, no less. I want to see the pasta in the pot soon, or you're going to be in hot water. It's not boiling. Oh, my god. Jen, get your pasta in get there. Get your pasta in the water, Jen. Two minutes. Sorry, two more minutes left. Come on. Let's, let's go, go, guys. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Only a few more seconds. Nice. Finish it off. Finish it off. Oh, this is stressful. Boom. 15 seconds! Get ready for the countdown! Keep going, Jen. Keep going, Jen. I think they're cooked. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! Yes! OK. Are you happy with this, Andrew? I'm quite happy, yes. Jen? I thought my, uh, sorry. Time just got away from me. I went with a more classic version of hand rolling it. I just know I wanted to do better. Don't despair, all right? Let's go look at the shape. Andrew, it's all over the place. It's supposed to resemble a spiral, okay? But it's not consistent. Now, to finish this, again, I see a distinct difference. The color variation, you notice right away, okay? This has kind of like a brownish tint to it. And this is like it's fresh green. You know, I love that bite on that pasta. And it's well cooked. You got the texture, which I enjoy. Sauce-wise, you added probably a bit too much of the pine nut and the cheese. OK. Because it makes the sauce very, very heavy. OK. OK? Yes. But good effort. Thank you, chef. Jan, the pasta, it's a little bit more consistent, but it may be a problem with size. Now, to finish this, the pasta. It's a little bit hard. Okay. It's not bouncy. Using your hand instead of a scraper when you're rolling it, you probably over rolled it a bit. But your sauce is beautiful. I get the freshness. You got the acidity in there as well. I would say it's a fine effort. Thank you. Andre May.
He both made loriguitas with an herb butter sauce. The noodles here, Andre, are very close to what Oscar showed you. How long did you cook your pasta? Maybe a minute and 20 seconds. The water wasn't boiling. I had to put something on the plate. I can tell the center of that noodle is raw. Always add your pasta to water that's rumbling. You did shine, though, with your flavors here. The flavors are big, bold, and confident. Delicious. The noodles here may look beautiful. They're very generous, they're very plump. And your sauce looks like you really emulsified it. It's a lot more generous. This pasta is cooked perfectly. However, your flavors are a little bit muted. They're not as electric as what we've come to expect from you. Barry, I have to ask you, how do you feel about Andy picking you as the one to go head to head with in this duel? Obviously, he felt I'm going to be the easiest one to beat, and I hope he pays for that. So let's start off by looking at Barry's uncooked capunti. I am quite impressed with the way they look. Nicely done. Thank you, chef. Your cooked pasta. What I do like is that vibrant, fresh tomato sauce. It is inviting. Sauce has a nice freshness to it. And the taste and the texture is really on point. Well done. Thank you, chef. Andy. Your uncooked capunti. Size variance within reasonable boundaries. Your cooked pasta. Your sauce is a little darker and deeper in color. Why do you think that is? I went heavy with the basil. The cook on the pasta, spot on. Yes. And you were happy with the flavors of the sauce? I was happy with it. Interesting. You must replicate this complex dish and all its many components in only 20 minutes. Whoa. Oh my Whoa. God. 20 minutes? It's, it's, it's impossible. 20 minutes, are you serious? My heart's kind of with them because that is not easy. So much to do and so little time. Gotta move, gotta move. Good job, good job. I gotta get myself going here. This is do or die. If I don't get this dish done in 20 minutes, I'm going home. There are a lot of steps to make the perfect fedua. The home cooks have to first start off by heating up their broth and infusing saffron into it. Saffron, it gives a nice color and it gives a nice flavor, but you can't overdo it. It is such a strong flavor. Second step is toasting those fedua noodles. They need to be toasted to bring out the wonderful flavor. Good job, Jenny. Taste, 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 taste. I think my palate is probably the strongest in the competition, and having done another pressure test, I've learned to be super quick. 15 minutes! Only 15 minutes left! Whoa, nice scales, Ross, holy. Andre's competing! Knife skills are critical here. Ow! Ah! Medic! Keep going with one hand. Keep going with one hand. Jenny now has just injured herself. She is losing precious time. They've already eaten up five minutes of this challenge. Way to go, Jenny. Mom life right there. This is the craziest pressure test ever. Crap. 10 minutes left. Let's go, let's go. Woo! At this point, your seafood needs to go in. You got the squid, you got the shrimp, and that has to be pan fried. Then you have the clams, the mussel. Now those have to be slowly steamed. The toughest one, I think, is the calamari, the squid. I've only cooked squid once before in my life. If you cook it too long, it will turn into rubber bands. If you don't cook it enough, it's raw. Everything is ready on this dish right now. It has to be better than everybody else's. Two minutes, two minutes, less than two. I'm very lucky I have a photographic memory. There was five shrimp, six mussels, and seven clams. There's no way I'm going home because I missed a shrimp. Am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? I have the exact opposite of a photographic memory. It's three, three, and three. But I'm not only replicating look, but I'm also replicating taste. It tastes almost exactly like it. One minute, you have 60 seconds. I want perfect Benoit. Looks good, you guys. 
My hands are moving before my brain. I just hope that I'm not forgetting anything. Watch the clock. I'm worried about the texture and flavor of the noodles in this dish. Right to the end, guys. You got this. 10, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! Andre. Hi, chef. This looks perfect. Let's taste the muscle. Beautiful. Wow. Clams look good too. Calamari looks good. Real test are those noodles. The flavors are all there in harmony and in balance. That is so flavorful. Wow. You know, the seafood speaks for itself, the way it's being cooked. But you can have beautifully cooked seafood if those noodles don't have the backup that the seafood needs. And your noodles are terrific. And I really mean that. Enjoy the moment. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Andre. Oh,